Hello and welcome to this video on why careful sample size planning is important when you estimate structural equation models, latent class models or other kinds of multivariate statistical models. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials usually related to structural equation modeling, multi-level analysis, latent class analysis and other multivariate techniques. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter as well as courses that I teach for Quantfish. In this video I want to talk about sample size planning and this is something that you may already know from simpler statistical methods that it's important to uh, conduct an a priori power analysis to know um, whether your sample size is large enough to detect the effects of interest, the effects that you are expecting, for example, in a regression analysis or correlation analysis or t-test or analysis of variance. And so here in this video, I want to highlight some additional issues that arise when you deal with multivariate statistical techniques such as structural equation modeling, latent class analysis, multi-level analysis, latent profile analysis, and so on, because with these techniques, oftentimes people forget a little bit about the sample size issue, or they avoid it in a way because they feel insecure about how to deal with it. So how would I address it? I can't just plug in my SEM model or latent class model into GPower and say, hey, GPower, give me my required or optimal sample size for this analysis because GPower won't deal with complex models like this. And so then some people will think that, oh, maybe I can ignore the issue or I don't know how to deal with it. So I'm just going to go with rules of thumb as to how many uh, individuals I need and this may not be very precise and it may not end up being enough um, for estimating the model that you want to estimate and so therefore in this video I want to talk a little bit about more why it is important to also consider careful sample size planning ahead of time when you deal with more complex statistical models such as structural equation modeling, factor modeling, and so on. So again, the first point is that, of course, statistical power is an issue. So in an SEM, you also typically are interested in finding statistical significance for the hypothesized effects. So path coefficients and or indirect effects, mediated effects, moderated effects, factor loadings maybe, and other parameters in the model that you want to test for significance and then if your sample is too small perhaps the standard errors are too large and you won't find statistical significance because your study is underpowered. So that's again an important issue but in addition to that we also have the issue that some of the models may not even work properly when your sample is too small. When you estimate latent variables as in structural equation modeling, factor analysis and latent class, latent profile analysis, then those techniques are more complicated than techniques that deal exclusively with manifest or observed variables such as analysis of variance or path analysis with observed variables and so therefore there are additional considerations because some samples sizes may be too small to obtain valid parameter estimates and standard errors as such. So there may be bias in your path coefficients or in their standard errors or in the fit statistics that you use to test a model because simply those are large sample techniques. For example, the chi-square test of model fit that's often used in structural equation modeling and also in latent class analysis to test the absolute fit of a model is a large sample statistic meaning its p-value follows asymptotic conditions or is only valid under um, the condition that the sample size goes to infinity and so then in smaller samples the p-value for example may not be valid the chi-square test may not provide valid results for your model testing or the standard errors of parameter estimates may be compromised so that you uh, obtain incorrect 
p-values, incorrect statistical inference, the confidence intervals may be incorrect. And so this is also something that's related to sample size because these models estimate many parameters and so you need to have a sufficient sample size for adequate unbiased results. In addition, there can be more problems with structural equation models in terms of improper solutions and non-convergence when your sample is too small. We know from simulation studies that improper solutions such as negative residual variance estimates or other out-of-range estimates such as correlation coefficients above one occur more frequently when samples are smaller and so therefore that's also something that you want to find out ahead of time am i on the safe side with my model with a given sample size or how many times will i encounter an improper solution what is the probability so to say of encountering that given the sample size so it's not just power it's also um, the question of can the model be estimated can it be properly estimated will the standard errors and parameter estimates be unbiased will there be a high rate of non-convergence for example if it's a complex model that can also be related to sample size that you run into convergence problems so all things to consider and then in addition to that there may be unforeseen factors that happen when you collect your data such as for example dropout missing data so you there may be an unexpectedly high rate of missing scores and then that is something that also affects your sample size your effective sample size at the end it may be smaller than what you thought and so that's also something that we should plan ahead for and factor in the possibility that there will be non-response, missing values, outliers, perhaps there will be some unexpected data structure such as cluster data. We may end up with non-independence due to cluster data, for example, and then that all may have an impact on the effective sample size. And then lastly, you also don't want to collect too much data. So some people might say, well, then I'm just going to go ahead and I, I'm just going to go with 700, 800 or 1000. But that would mean spending a lot of resources on data that you actually may not need. Maybe 300 is enough, right? So you don't want to waste your time and money collecting too much data. So it's really about the optimal sample size, keeping in mind that you want a little bit of a cushion in case something happens and you end up with less data than you thought, but you also don't want to end up with double the sample size necessarily, unless you have unlimited time and funds available, that may be fine, but typically we don't have that. So we want to get a sense for what sample size is um, necessary and sufficient if possible. So we also don't want to overshoot the sample size too much. And so then what should you do since I told you initially that you can't use programs like GPower for complex statistical analysis such as SEM and latent class modeling, how can you determine the appropriate sample size? And so my recommendation is to use Monte Carlo simulation studies using simulations to determine all those different aspects of the data and the optimal sample size. A simulation allows you to model or to simulate and e examine a model as a whole, including fit statistics, including standard errors, including the rate of non-convergence, including the rate of improper solutions, including other things. All these things can be studied at once and it's not just about figuring out the power for a specific parameter. So you can also examine power with um, a simulation, but it's only one aspect of a simulation. A simulation is much more holistic for studying sample size requirements because it involves all those other factors as well. You can simulate missing data, you can simulate non-normal data, you can simulate um, cluster data and so on all kinds of different aspects you can so say look at ahead of time what impact they have under different conditions so it's a very good way to study 
your model and the behavior of the model that you hypothesize under different sample size and other conditions. It's a lot more flexible than using a power analysis software or power tables, which may not work anyway for latent variable models. So Monte Carlo simulation studies are useful. Now, some people will be intimidated and will say, I've never run a simulation in my life and Monte Carlo simulation, that sounds intimidating and horrible and I don't want to do it and I don't have no idea how to do it, but it's actually not that hard. Modern software programs for structural equation modeling and latent variable modeling in general make it quite convenient to run a simulation. For example, M plus is a very, very convenient program for running simulation studies because it allows you to even run a simulation from existing parameter estimates from a previous run of a an actual model for actual data. You can just save all the estimates and then M plus will generate a simulation from the estimates. You don't even have to type uh, a lot of the commands that are required. Also, I offer a free workshop on sample size planning with M plus using path analysis as an example that you can find in the description here for this video. So you can sign up for that free online workshop and learn how to set up a simulation to study um, power, to study bias, to study fit statistics and um, missing data and all these kinds of aspects. And it's actually not that hard. And it's a great skill to have because you can apply it to so many different models, pretty much any model that you could fit in M plus, you could simulate there as well. And then um, so say it's all in one software and it's very easy to um, analyze. There's the direct output of power estimates. There's direct a direct way to examine bias. And so it is something that is very useful. I hope you find found this uh, video useful to learn more about sample size planning for complex statistical analyses, including structural equation modeling and latent class latent profile analysis. If you did, then please subscribe to this channel, hit the like button, leave a comment in the comment section, and I'll see you next time.